Camping for one pound a night, I don't believe you. Hi folks, thanks for watching the video. If you're a subscriber, many thanks for continuing to follow. Uh, welcome new viewers, feel free to like and subscribe if you like what you see. Um, I'm still quite new to this and haven't quite gauged um, what interests people and what length of video and how to balance it out and that sort of thing with the content. Um, to this end, I'm going to make this video quite short um, as I felt the last one was a little bit too long. I thought I'd continue the theme of talking about a point of interest, then some footage of a recent trip to follow. The theme today is going to be camping on a budget. I mentioned on the last video that me and my wife have recently retired at the age of 56 and budgeting is going to be very important to us. Um, for the next 10 years we've got to make the money last uh, and that's when our pensions, our state pensions will click in. We've set ourselves a limit of £10 a night, £300 a month uh, for the time we're away long term. Um, so we're help, ho hoping for a combination of freebies, cheapies and the occasional posh site to do laundry and have a proper shower. The second part of the video will be our recent trip away to a place called Home Upon Spalding Moor in the East Riding District. Uh, so stay tuned for that later. Um, so without further ado, um, let's make a start. We've been motorhoming for about three years, um, but I've always had tents, trailer tents, little tents, big tents. Um, I've been camping since I was three um, and always enjoyed sleeping under the stars um, via scouts, armour cadets, the military, family. Um, so I think that qualifies me to talk a little bit about camping cheaply. However, there's lots of experienced people out there that are uh, well into wild camping and saving lots of money so check them out as well firstly let's talk about wild camping everyone loves a freebie but in my opinion you need to be mindful of whether you're camping illegally posing a danger to yourselves and particularly upsetting the locals we tend to stay at places we found on search for sites or park for night more on these two later the good thing about using these apps is the comments and feedbacks uh, sorry, the comments and feedback that you get from other users is invaluable. Um, it will keep you informed of whether there's been anti any antisocial behaviour there, new signs restricting access, etc. Um, also, on some of the groups we're in on Facebook, uh, there'll be some little gems in there that people will uh, tip you off about. Remember, wild camping isn't always free. Um, sometimes there's an honesty box asking for a few quid. Um, so please contribute to that, it helps maintain the site, etc. There's generally no facilities at these locations, so you need to be self-sufficient and take away all your waste. Our golden rules are, leave no trace at the, at the site. Don't set up camp with chairs, canopies, awnings, etc. Arrive late and leave early, and don't overstay your welcome. Oh, and finally, if it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. A bit of lip, litter picking at the site wouldn't go amiss too. Uh, it's nice to do your bit as a thank you. Um, and leave some feedback on um, search for sites and part for night, um, which will be helpful to other users. Secondly, I'm going to talk about the Camping and Caravanning Club and the Caravan and Motorhome Club. We are members of both and cost around £50 each. Um, it's got to be worth half of that for the uh, for the magazine every month um, so I think it's pretty good value you also get discount at outdoor stores so um, that helps towards those all those little gadgets you want to buy the club sites are a bit pricey but if you like comfort and don't mind paying then check them out midweek offers and out of season can bring the price right down and also, um, if you like us and intend to use a fully serviced site around once a week to do laundry and showers, um, they'd be ideal for that. What each of the clubs does have, which we like, are the certificated sites for the Camping and Caravanning Club and the certificated locations for the Camping and Motorhome Club. 
these are sites of a maximum of five pitches that are given their approval by the uh, the relevant clubs um, instead of the local authority. They range in price from five pound upwards um, and are often in some cracking locations. Uh, you have to be a member to use them, but they're also listed on search for sites. So if you want to check a few of them out before committing to joining the club, then you can do that also. Lastly, I'd like to tell you about the district associations within the Camping and Caravanning Club. These are voluntary run and exist for most regions across the UK. The DAs run pop-up sites, which are usually up to five nights, and they run temporary holiday sites, which are usually up to 28 nights. You can just rock up at the sites and pay for as many nights as you require. However, during COVID restrictions, they do ask you to book, even if, it's, even if you do it down the road before you get there. You need to be self-sufficient as there's only usually Elson Point and water, um, some, although some do have better facilities. They're usually in a farmer's field, the rally field of an existing campsite, a race course, all sorts of locations. Prices range from £6 a night up to about £6 a night, £16 a night, sorry, but can be situated in some of the most expensive camping areas of the UK, namely Cornwall. We've done some great meets and have met some super like-minded people. We recently went to a pop-up site that was only a pound a night. Uh, carry on watching, I'll tell you a bit more about that. Uh, I think I've said enough now. I hope uh, that was of some interest to you. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments section and continue watching to have a brief look at a pop-up site we attended uh, recently, late April 2021. This ace man's part next to us. It's a uh, zebra pattern. Cracking man though. We're at another temporary holiday site at home of Von Spalding Moor. Quite a lot of people here, but it is a bit of a special offer. It's only a pound a night. So. Uh, Lots of people having a really good time. <laughs> First night, so it's um, it's still quite quiet. Little evening tour around the van, around the site. Sorry, it's a lovely site. There's a footpath goes along, an old railway track, and the, yes, there is a river down here. There's another view of the site in the background. We're just going for a walk. Um, it's uh, early evening, the sun's seven. going down, 7 o'clock, starting to get cool. The only problem is, the Elson point is uh, back in the main campsite, which is about 400 yards down this, across this bridge. There's the drinking water, not too far from the main site, which is just over there. Yeah, we had to come in on this rickety bridge. I must say, I was, um, I was a bit scared coming over it. Three and a half ton of van under me. But um, I have been on a diet for a while, so uh, I think we're all right. Really? <laughs> So this is an old disused railway. We're going to walk along here tomorrow. That'd be great on bikes to get to Market Wheaton. Yeah, and we're going to get to Market Wheaton and then you can actually do the Wolds Way from there. So we're That'd undecided. So we'll have to come back. <laughs> yeah, we're undecided whether to drive there to Market Wheaton and then do the Wolds Way because it's about five miles away. Because uh, sort of five miles there and five miles back, I don't know about that. It's a little bit. That's what we did last week. Yeah, I suppose so. Not there. This is the main campsite over there by the farm buildings. So uh, Friday morning of our trip out in the van, we're doing a bit of the Wolds Way from Market Wheat and North. We're just going to walk and see how far we get. Market Wheat and looks a nice little town. Um, little bit of industry here, not far from Hull and Beverly. Yeah. I uh, I could live around here I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, I'll have to stop saying yeah. yeah. We're just going to collide with a, a tractor that's muck spreading. So it's, it is um, no, I think it's cow shit, but <laughs> <laughs> stinks all the same. I was walking towards her on that shot and he had the bloody camera the wrong way around. <laughs> So we're just walking into Lonsborough just to tell you a little bit more about the Wolds Way. It starts at Hessel Foreshore which is the Humber Bridge and it goes up to Filey on the uh, east coast just below, just above Bridlington. Um, so it's quite a decent walk, long distance walk so it's marked by the Acorn uh, and we're doing about four miles of it. <laughs> so nothing um, out of the ordinary. More. We might do more, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but it's, it's lovely so far. This is what retirement's going to be like. Are we up for it, Jonah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Advantage. Not quite there yet. Jill's still got a couple of weeks, but. Tell me again. Keep, keep reminding me. <laughs> yeah, well, we need the money. <laughs>
just thought I'd take a bit of a footage of our uh, house we've put an offer in for. <laughs> oh, in fact, you can buy free range eggs there. So we finished the walk on the Wolds Way. Just got back to the van. Thankfully it's still there. Don't look like anyone's hit it. Yeah, we'll get in and shove off back to camp. So that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please give us a like. And if you aren't already subscribed, then uh, perhaps you'd uh, consider subscribing as well. Clicking on the little bell will inform you when we bring new videos out. Um, I hope I got the pitch of that just right. I hope it wasn't too long uh, or too short. Um, I'm aiming for about 20 minutes. Um, thanks again for watching and see you again soon. Happy camping.